what would happen to really change things is that you keep having demand decline, which I think you will have. And that is um, when that happens and unemployment goes higher, the demand even goes lower. And then that, what happens from that is all of a sudden companies have to cut prices, margins go down, they're not making as much money, and obviously prices go down. I'm talking about public prices. So I think that's the catalyst, or that's basically the way it all comes out. And it's over a, probably over the next two quarters, three quarters, that's what the way it's going to come out. And I, that, that to me would translate into a lower market, and it would make sense to us. Ted Oakley is a prominent financial expert and the managing partner and founder of Oxbow Advisors LLC. Ted Oakley believes that increasing unemployment alongside rising demand will reshape the economy leading to weaker stock market. While the unemployment rate rose to an 18-month high in August, the 3.8% level remains relatively low by historical standards. U.S. stocks finished lower Wednesday with shares of technology companies dropping sharply as the S&P 500 booked back-to-back -back losses amid a rise in Treasury yields. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 0.6%, while the S&P 500 dropped 0.7%, and the tech-heavy Nasdaq Composite sank 1.1%, according to preliminary data from FactSet. Oakley mentions Citibank retail credit plunged 12% in August after a 9.3% dip in July, questioning whether varying viewpoints or optimism dominate Wall Street. The bank's net income tumbled 36% to $2.92 billion, or $1.33 per share, in the three months to June 30, the profit was weighed down by higher costs for layoffs and increased provisions for credit losses, the bank said. While highlighting the cyclical nature of interest rates, Oakley states their tendency to decline in response to significant events. After surging to more than 9% in June 2022, inflation has dropped since then, though at 3.3%, it is still above the Federal Reserve's target of 2%. A central bank can lower short-term interest rates and buy assets during a downturn to stimulate spending. Furthermore, Oakley linked the 10-year bond yield surge to changing sentiments following the Jackson Hole Conference. The yield on the 10-year Treasury surged roughly 9 basis points to about 4.27%. Here are selective segments from a recent interview, where Ted Oakley shares his viewpoints. Let's proceed further. But before we do, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You know, David, I do. I think uh, what people fail to realize is that it, you can look at a lot of things in the economy and try to draw the certain things, but GDP and economics and the whole business cycle runs off of demand. And when you have demand declining, which we certainly do the last three months, four months, and it's every every single month is a little worse, uh, I'm not certain why I I can't get the picture that people are drawing that we're not going to have some landing, but uh, but I certainly I certainly see the same things that I saw four months ago. Well, it's interesting you talk about Citibank. Uh, if you look at just the last couple of days, if you look at their credit hard, what we call hard retail credit, is was down twelve over twelve percent in August, and that's after being down nine point three percent in July. And so it's interesting to me. I don't know if they look at different sides of the picture. Or what? But uh, now you have to remember now, a lot of Wall Street is going to be optimistic. It paid to be optimistic. If, you, if you're really a pessimist up there, you won't be there long. So, you know, they, they get paid to be that way. And I understand that. From Moody's standpoint, uh, what I think they fail to realize is they're not noticing the trends of demand and looking underneath at some of the things that are going to be you're really coming out over the next three or four months. I, I don't know what they'll do, David, but I do know this. Interest rates are cyclical, and anybody that tells you they're not has not been around a long time because I can take you through any economic period, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, and interest rates go up and down. And I don't know when they do it, but eventually your rates come back down again. And it's usually when either you have a catastrophic loss, stock market, et cetera, or the economy really is tanking. And they get scared and they think, you know, we need to do something. But um, the time timing of it's always hard. And I, I we have a hard time with that because it's, you know, we don't we don't know. So we just try to hedge hedge the whole thing and hope we're hope we can come out on top on the other side. But I but they eventually will come down. You know, I just don't know when, but eventually it will. Well, I I think when people people were thinking, you know, that that uh you know, things were going, we're sort of peaked out, you know, in that last hike. 
and they thought, well, uh, everything's going to be okay. And then, and then you go to Jackson Hole, and the chairman says, "Hey, look, uh, not true. <laughs> we're we're not in that mode right now." And then all of a sudden, you see some things. I'm talking about stagflation type things, where things are going up in price, but yet business is not good, and they're they they're thinking, "Well, gosh, I've got to have." If you look at the spread, usually between the inflation rate and a 10-year yield, normally it's going to be about um, one and a half points, maybe one and three quarters or so. And right, they had to make that a little wider because you're not getting inflation down to the point where you could say stick it at three and three quarters. And so I think people freaked a little on that and said, hey, well, you know, I'm going to sell some bonds. And that's what happened. I don't think so, because if you look at the, uh, if you look at the, you look at the earnings yield on the S&P, 500 and the earnings yield right now is less than than the treasury yield say in us in a one-year treasury well as long as that's happening there's no reason for you to there's no reason for you to think that that's a setup for a fabulous market or something here and I, I just think that's the situation you're into and it's hard to convince people um that if you're you're getting four and a quarter for a 10-year treasury why wouldn't i buy a one-year treasury at 548. And so, you know, that that's where we are in the cycle right now. During the interview, Ted Oakley outlined his investment strategy favoring floating rate U.S. Treasuries. The 10-year Treasury bond is a screaming buy for investors, thanks to the Fed's success in bringing down inflation so far, according to BMO Capital Markets head of U.S. rate strategy, Ian Lingen. Oakley mentioned long-term holdings in tech giants like Microsoft, Apple, and Google, employing a strategy of selling when they hit new highs. Pressured by rates, technology stocks underperformed, with the tech-heavy Nasdaq notching a third straight day of losses. The biggest laggards included NVIDIA and Apple, dropping more than 3% each. Along with Apple, Amgen and Boeing fell about 2% each, weighing on the Dow. Let's get back to interview. Well, it depends on what the business is. I mean, you could have treasuries on the balance sheet, but if your business is declining, it won't make any difference because that's where you make, that's where you make the most money. It, it, you know, is in in that particular area, and I think people keep talking about you know sales this and this being higher, that being higher. One of the reasons it's higher is because they're paying more for the product. It's not that they're buying more of it. If you look at the numbers, and it's up three or four percent for the year, that's because the prices went up. It's not because they're buying they're buying a whole lot more of something. Well, in this up uptrending interest rate environment. For us, rather than us trying to pick and choose and try to think that we know what the interest rates are going to do, which we don't, uh, we keep a lot of money in what we call a floating rate U.S. Treasury, which it resets every nine, every every Monday on whatever the 90-day rate is. And so, in it, and it, what I like about it is it beats all the money market funds, it beats all the treasury funds because there's no management fee. So. You know, and, and I, I like that about it. And it, it, you can ride it all the way up. Now it's going to come back down too when rates come down. And so that's where we have the most money. Now I might say to you that we also have some money and some, some money in the one year, some money in the two year, and we have a little money, uh, you know, in the twenty-five and thirty year. Uh, and just because we don't know, not it's the smallest part, by the way, but. Still, we most of the money we we have right now is in the floating rate, and it's paid off so far. But we will have to make a move at some point because you know the rates will start down. Well, let me let me say this about those, and I'll just tell you that you know we've owned Microsoft for fifteen years, and so if you look at Microsoft, uh, Apple, and Google, we we still have positions in them. What we've done though over the years is as they hit new peaks, we would we would we sell those back. In other words, now they're down to uh, I mean, Microsoft's still a fairly large position, but we sold that stuff all the way up. And when it comes to taking brand new positions, no, we have a brand new money coming in. We're not really pushing into those areas. We've made a lot of money in them over time, but they're smaller now. The places we see now that had, you know, more uh, more upside and, and certainly safety to us. Um, would would be in healthcare, energy, you know, uh, we bought, we've done some things along that line. But I have to tell you that I think that this whole big seven or big 10 stocks, I think what's going to happen is these people that are concentrated in those areas, I think it comes back to haunt them because uh, when you have a market downturn, they go after the big ones. 
And, uh, you know, that always happens that way. And they go after them in the end, not in the beginning. They look okay in the beginning. And then as the end comes around, people are like, everybody's in the same thing. So when they go to really, really sell, they sell the biggies. And I think that's what will happen this time. In today's evolving financial system, the insights provide a highlight the intricate interplay between rising interest rates, economic shifts, and investment strategies. The preference for floating rate U.S. Treasuries in response to the Fed's inflation management efforts underscores a cautious approach in an uncertain environment. What opportunities and risks lie ahead for investors as we navigate these dynamic financial environment? Share your thoughts in comment section below. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. Thank you for watching.